and welcome back to the channel. Welcome in Galicia, the northwestern region of Spain. We are going to spend this weekend in Santiago de Compostela and A Coruña, a slightly <coughs> less known but not less interesting city here in Spain. It's seven o'clock in the morning and we are heading to the main mass of the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela. There are also guided tours here, but it's quite difficult to get tickets for those guided tours. You have to book them 60 days in advance, but there is a chance to visit the cathedral and visit the most sacral places of this cathedral if you go to a mass. And this is something we're trying to do right now. Let's go. In Santiago de Compostela currently there are around 100,000 inhabitants and roughly 40% of them are students. So it's a very young city with a very old university. The university was founded here in the 16th century and it's supposed to be one of the oldest universities not only in Spain but the entire Europe. And the faculties of these universities, or at least some faculties of these universities, are located here in the historical city center, right in front of uh, the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela. It's raining cat and dogs here in Santiago de Compostela today, but it's actually not a surprise because Galicia is one of the most humid regions of Spain. And it's raining here two times more than in Hamburg, one of the most humid areas in Germany. While it is raining here in Santiago, we decided to visit the local market. It's called Mercado de Abastos. Uh, there are local fruits, vegetables, fish and meat here. And the most important thing, there is a roof, so it's not raining. Let's discover local dishes here in Santiago de Compostela. The first kiosk on our way and we already see some local food here for example this um, empanada which is actually a cake with meat or fish inside this uh, dish comes from galicia another culinary speciality from santiago is this tarta alamenda santiago which is like quite a simple cake with almonds uh, covered with cross from sugar power. Actually, we had it all ready for breakfast and it was really delicious. The symbol of Camino de Santiago is this seashell that pilgrims brought from Santiago to their places all over Europe. And here on this market you have a possibility to buy not only the seashell but actually the animal inside it to cook it here on the market, eat it and keep the seashell as a souvenir from Santiago de Compostela. We are currently not far away from the historical city center of Santiago de Compostela. It's Parco de Alameda and they promised a beautiful viewing point. Ah, here it is! We are actually approaching it and from there we should see not only the historical city center but the main signs of Santiago de Compostela, its cathedral. I must admit it's indeed one of the most beautiful viewing points in Santiago de Compostela and it's located next to this huge eucalyptus tree. To be very honest I didn't know that we have eucalyptus trees in Europe but apparently they feel quite comfortable here in this part of Galicia. Behind us there is currently this museum which is called Museo de Pablo Calego and this is one of the most interesting buildings here in Santiago de Compostela. It hosts a museum of Galician culture, history and traditions. But the most interesting part of this museum is actually the building itself. And we are going to explore it right now. The main social media site of this museum is actually the stairs. It looks really absolutely surreal. There are actually three staircases here that go up and don't cross each other. 
We came to the next site here in Santiago de Compostela. It's called the City of Modern Art of Galicia. This is the most recent, the most modern site here in Santiago de Compostela. It was built already in the 21st century. The architect of this complex is Peter Eisenman. This is an American architect who designed, by the way, also the Holocaust Monument in Berlin. This project is actually related to many scandals and problems here in Galicia. It didn't attract too many tourists, and the budget for its construction was more than doubled. That's why in 2020 the decision was made not to build the final part of this complex. Just one hour away from Santiago de Compostela, in, we are in a completely different environment. We are in A Coruña, a city at the Atlantic coast. There are almost no tourists, only locals. The atmosphere is very, very relaxed and it's a perfect combination for our weekend. The city of Carunia is also famous for its balconies, lodges covered with glass that protect their citizens from winds and rain. This is the official historical city center of Carunia, Plaza de Maria Pita, and the main building which hosts municipality in it. Acarunia has a quite um, unique geographical location. It is located on a peninsula surrounded by ocean from different sides. And currently we are here in the marina of Acarunia. And there is even a cruise ship terminal here. Castello de San Anton is a very old fortification here, located on a small island very close to Acarunia. Nowadays it is connected with the city via this small dam, but in previous days you had to take a boat to get here, and it was quite often used uh, during the wars uh, to yeah, protect the city. Acarunia is very popular with digital nomads and early pensioners. People come here to spend their summer. The weather is very pleasant here. The maximum temperature in summer are around like 26, 28 degrees Celsius. Um, the city is very clean. It's supposed to be very safe. There is this nice beach right in the city center. There is also a special road for bicycles. And there is also a track for runners here right in the city center. And this beach line is relatively long. It's supposed to be the longest beach line in Europe around 14 kilometers, so the quality of life should be relatively high here. And the prices are relatively moderate um, for European, but also for Spanish standards. The Hercules Tower is the main site of the city Acarunia. This is supposed to be the oldest still functioning lighthouse in Europe, which was built here more than 2000 years ago during the Roman times. The construction of this lighthouse is linked to a variety of legends and stories that have been passed down through the centuries. The best known are those related to Hercules. After three days of battle, Hercules defeated the giant Gerion. After burying the severed head of his enemy, the hero declared that a tower should be built on that spot and the city should be established. This city should be named Krunia in honor of the first woman who lived here in the location. Don't make our mistakes. Uh, if you want to visit the lighthouse and to climb the stairs, you have to buy the ticket in advance online. And there are several time slots available, but right now um, the next time slot is available only in a couple of hours. That's why we are not going to wait. We're going down and continuing our work in the city. I was already ready to tell you the story of the ancient men here that stand here for centuries and thousands of years. Then we read Wikipedia and understood that these men here are actually sculptures and they were created in 1994. Um, but you have to admit they look really nice here and remind of the men here in Bretagne in the northern France.
there is a cruise ship that docked here in the Caronia today. It's called Disney Dream. So these cruise ships belong to the Disney company. And I've heard it's quite interesting for kids. And you see there is an attraction park upstairs. We can even see <laughs> people riding there. Write in the comments below if you had an experience cruising on such a ship and if you liked it.